Yo, what's going on, guys? And we are here with our usual weekly update. Timestamps will be in the description. We're going to try to run through these. It is January 26th. These are the latest NBA trade rumors that we are hearing. Again, links are in the description on what we're hearing about every single one. And if you guys want to just skip ahead, go ahead and there'll be individual videos. Let's get right into it. So the Hawks won't take D'Angelo Russell. All right. If you're a Hawks fan screaming for D'Lo, which I doubt you are, they're not taking it. The guy's averaging like 28 points, like playing absurd right now. Is on a heater. People are like, oh, they're pumping up his spot. So people are interested in him. I still believe that the best scenario is convincing the Brooklyn Nets to send Spencer Dinwiddie over there. But what we're specifically hearing is that from our man, Mr. Sam Amick of The Athletic, the Los Angeles Lakers have been linked to DeJounte Murray. It is more than likely he's going to end there. But the more time that passes, there's a chance that somebody could come in and steal him. However, it is a bit difficult right now for this deal to go through. The Hawks reportedly do not want DeAndre Russell in a deal for DeJounte Murray. In order to match the salary, the Lakers almost certainly have to offer Russell for Murray. Now, they do have Rui Hachimura, Gabe Vincent, and a few other salaries that they could use, but they're reluctant to use those players as D'Angelo Russell is the easier fit to move on from. Now, if a deal for DeJounte Murray were to materialize, the Hawks and the Lakers will likely have to find a third team that is willing to take on D'Angelo Russell. The veteran guard is owed $17.3 million for this season and has an $18.7 million player option for the next year. So, Time will tell if they're going to be able to get him now. D'Angelo Russell at this point, he's a guy that he's a creative ball handler. He's going to take a bunch of shots and he'll hit them at a rate that's somewhat acceptable. Sometimes he'll go cold and he can, you know, distribute it at a decent level. The man is a poor defender who doesn't really give much effort on that side, but he can shoot his team into a win or shoot them out of a win and into a loss. And he's better suited to be an instant offense off the bench, but he's still a good player. As of right now, Dan D'Angelo Russell on January 26th is averaging 30 minutes a night, 17 points, 48% from the field, while shooting 42.2% from 3 3 rebounds, 6.2 assists, and just under a steal a night. So let me hear your thoughts. What do you guys think of D'Angelo Russell? And the rest of the video will be prior reporting that we've done about D'Angelo Russell. The Suns, the Pistons, and the Jazz are interested in Miles Bridges. Miles Bridges is a guy who is on an expiring contract and will be a free agent this year. His restricted free agency is gone. It's been used. That's how the, the Hornets were able to retain him. So you would be on a restricted free agent if a team were to trade for him. Miles Bridges is currently this season averaging 29.8 minutes. I mean, my apology, 37 minutes a night. For his career, he's played 29.8 minutes a game. 37 minutes. Just under 21 points a game, shooting 45.5% from the field, 35.5% from three, seven rebounds, three assists, and a steal a night. While Miles Bridges, obviously, we know what happened this, you know, the past year, year or so. He's still 25 years old only, and he is six foot seven, one of the most athletic guys out there in the league. He's 230 pounds. He can arguably play three positions, the two, the three, even small ball four in a pinch if you need to. He can handle the ball a little bit. He's still raw there, but he's still decent. He's become a high volume three point shooter and he's improving and he's taking a whole, you know, huge leap. He's six foot seven with a six foot nine and a half wingspan. Now, Miles Bridges makes 7.9. And, you know, like we said, the, there are several teams, the Suns, Pistons, and the Jazz that would like him. Now, if we look at the Suns, how are the Suns going to do a deal for Mr. Miles Bridges? The easiest way for them to do the deal is Naz Little with you know like bull bull and whatever picks they could muster now will that be enough i don't think so but there is reports coming out from his camp saying that they are very confident that miles bridges will be able or the suns feel very confident that they should be able to land miles bridges as it might be possible I, i'm personally not that you know in I don't think it'll be great, but they are saying that the $7.9 million, which is Naz Little p packaged with either Chemsey Metu, Yuta Watanabe, or Bull Bull would get the deal done. If you think that's enough, you know, it could work. But if that doesn't work, Phoenix might pursue Royce O'Neal as somebody that they like. Now, if we look at the Jazz, I think the Jazz have a lot that they could offer. If the Hornets want to stay competitive, they could take one of you know 
Chris Dunn packaged with a Taylor Horn Tucker or a Kelly Olynyk, and maybe even turn around and trade Kelly Olynyk in a third team for some more assets, something along those lines that could get the Hornets where they get somebody who could help them win now. Now, if they want just assets, young players, let me just get some young boys on this team. It's a lost season, this and that. You look at the Charlotte Hornets and you think, okay, you know, the Charlotte Hornets are thinking, we probably want some more wing guys, maybe a shooting guard. And that's where I think if Jaden Ivey was available, that could get the deal done real quick. If they offer Kelly and Hayes in a pick, that like a first round pick, a nice first round pick, I could get the deal done. And yeah, that's I think those are really the two players that they would be interested in. So I want to hear your guys' thoughts in the comment section. What do you guys think? So what we're hearing from Dwayne Rankin of Arizona Republic is that the Phoenix Suns have interest in trading for Miles Bridges of you know of the Hornets they the Bridges is one of the 10 players that the Suns have interest in while Jake Fisher says the Utah Jazz and the Pistons are also in a interest for trading Bridges now Bridges does have a no trade clause on his deal because he will lose his birds rights if he were to be traded this is because Bridges is on a one-year deal with bird rights following this season because he'll be looking for a bigger contract than his non-bird rights would allow for Bridges would be considered a rest of the season rental for Phoenix now, the Suns are also aware that Bridges has off-the-court issues that still need to be handled. He has a pending court date for next month for allegedly violating a protection order stemming from the DV incident in 2022 that saw him receive 30-game suspension in the NBA. Another challenge in trading for Bridges is the Hornets reporter are looking for draft picks in any deal. Phoenix is limited in them, and the Pistons and Jazz can beat them by a wide margin. So for me, I look at this and I think, look, the Pistons and the Jazz probably going to get him if he were to be traded. I think the Pistons were the team that will get him because they can pay him a boatload of cash in the offseason. But at the same time, why would they give up Jaden Ivey when they can just wait till the offseason and sign and trade for him? That's just my two cents. My Washington Wizards. It's been a rough year. The Wizards, we're in rebuild year. And the execs have been told by Ted Lyonis that this rebuild has to happen. And we need picks. We don't have enough. On a recent episode of ESPN's Hoop Collective with Brian Windhorst, reported that the Washington front office has been given a mandate from ownership to acquire as many first-round picks as possible, at least one. And they have to do this. It's a mandate. It's not, there's no question about it. So it has been rumored that they have Tyus Jones, Kyle Guzman, Daniel Gafford, and Jordan Poole all available for trade. And little rumors of Denny Avdia and Tyus Jones. Now, Jones is on an expiring deal. Kuzma's and Gafford and Poole are all guys who have multiple years left on their deal. I personally think Tyus Jones is a consolidation prize for the Lakers. If they strike out on all their deals, do not be surprised if Gabe Vincent and Jalen Huchifino are packaged for Tyus Jones. That is a good deal for them in terms of what they would get back. I could see a team, Daniel Gafford, there are a few teams that need a backup center. That could out go out and get him. I could also see a team trying to convince the Portland Trailblazers to use Robert Williams' salary to send Daniel Gafford to them, and then a whole three-team trade of using salary fillers to move some contracts around the way, so a team could acquire Gafford, and the Wizards take Robert Williams as a reclamation project as he comes back from knee surgery. I think there are a lot of avenues for one of these players or multiple of these players to be traded away in compensation for a first round pick as a third team in a deal that would you know help facilitate a team a deal for a team like the the lakers the heat maybe the phoenix suns many others that i do think would have interest in talking to the wizards and giving them compensation of a pick maybe even the oklahoma city thunder if they're really trying to get their game up interestingly enough we're hearing that the the bulls want a strong return for zach levine I don't know what that means at this point. I've said it but repeatedly. I do believe that Zach Levine, if they're lucky, they'll get a return similar to Bradley Beal. And I I believe that the this is a team, the Chicago Bulls, that they don't want to rebuild, but they do want to get rid of Zach Levine. And we're hearing from Casey Johnson of NBC Sports Chicago that the Bulls are open to trading Zach Levine, which we've known for a while as per his trade request. However, the Bulls aren't looking to just give away Zach Levine in a deal just to shed that salary out of desperation. 
Obviously, Chicago is still looking for a strong return for the veteran guard. The Bulls and Detroit Pistons recently engaged in a trade discussion for Zach Levine. However, things never got serious because they required one of Jaden Ivey, Kate Cutting, and Jalen Duran. Or I think the last guy was Jaden, Jaden, Jaden Ivey, Jalen Duran, Kate Cunningham, and I feel like there's oh I feel like there's somebody else. My oh Asar Thompson, and. I, I believe the best way, $40 million, I mean, they could eat the salary if they wanted to, but the best deal for them would be Joe Harris. I'm talking about the Pistons. Joe Harris packaged, you would assume, with a combination, I mean, Joe Harris and maybe Kellyn Hayes and Kevin Knox with a pick. That's your best deal. Best deal, I bet, that the, the Pistons would offer. They're not giving you crap for whatever you want, but... I do think it's definitely something interesting as we see. So what we're hearing specifically that Levine requested the trade earlier in the season and it was reported that Chicago would attempt to accommodate the trade. However, no serious trade market has developed for Levine, who's owed just over $178 million through 2026 to 27 NBA season. So I know a lot of people want to pay that man that pretty penny that he has owed to him over the next few years. Toronto is open for business. Masai Ujiri's out here wheeling and dealing telling people whoever will listen. Hey, we'll trade. We'll make moves. So what we're specifically hearing is that the Toronto Raptors appear to be open for business ahead of the February 8th deadline. With basically everybody not named Scotty Barnes, Emmanuel Quickly, and RJ Barrett available for trade. The main vision is developing a young core, how this organization is going to look in the future and establishing a foundation for the future of this team, said head coach Darko Ryakovich on Thursday. Bruce Brown has reportedly drawn first round pick interest from several teams, including the Lakers and the Knicks. Now, we'll look at the rest of this roster when we see it. What I personally think is multiple of these players could be acquired in a three team teal, which I believe guys like Chris Boucher, Thad Young, Otto Porter, are guys, teams like the Golden State Warriors, the New York Knicks, the Miami Heat, the Oklahoma City Thunder, New Orleans Pelicans, the Lakers, the Suns are all going to be looking at and saying, hey, we know a lot of people are trying to do some deals. We know there's some salaries that don't want to go places. We're even hearing that Jakob Pertl could be available. And we know the Pelicans have been trying to get rid of Jonas Valanciunas all season long. Could Jonas Valanciunas be packaged with a guy like Nanji Marshall, a guy like Trey Murphy who needs to get paid soon, for Jakob Perta, who would arguably be an upgrade from Jonas Valanciunas. There's also the rumor that Dennis Schroeder and a guy like Bruce Brown, who together make about $34.4 million, could be traded for D'Lo and Rui Hachimura and Jalen hood Shifino, which right there is about $35 million. There are a lot of things that could be at, at stake and a lot of moving pieces. Chris Boucher is a man that the Miami Heat and the Boston Celtics are very interested in. Now, Boston has a trade exception, but you can't put matching salary in a trade exception, so my whole assumption is they might go out and get Otto Porter. There are multiple teams that have trade exceptions that, that could take on Otto Porter, that could take on Thad Young. And Jalen McDaniels is another name I think that people should have interest in. So with that being said, I think there are a lot of players that could be good, you know, ninth or 10th guys on teams that have deep playoff aspirations. So I, I think Toronto is a team to keep an eye out for moving pieces, especially in a three team deal. All right, we're hearing what certain players might be costing on the market. Yes, it, it's definitely a, an interesting year. We heard that certain players are going to be you know, certain teams are going more than t usual teams are going to be buyers this year, specifically with teams looking at the situation that we're currently having with guys like the Washington Wizards or guys on the Washington Wizards, on the Portland Trailblazers, and multiple other teams that are tanking or you know have no playoff aspirations. Detroit, San Antonio, having veterans that are on tradable contracts. Now, if Tyus Jones, Malcolm Brogdon, or Bruce Brown are traded at the deadline, their incumbent teams are seeking at least a first round pick back in exchange. Sources tell Jake Fisher of Yahoo Sports. Now, are these unprotected? Are these protected first round picks? Is this a pick swap? There is no you know, clear definition on what they want. But the price paid by the Miami Heat to the Charlotte Hornets for Terry Rozier 
the expiring contract to Kyle Lowry plus a protected 2027 first round pick has helped set the market precedent for what the three other available ball handlers could go for. Like I said, Tyus Jones could be traded as a backup plan if the Lakers miss out on DeJounte Murray because they're asking for a first round pick. Maybe they're able to package Jalen Hood, Shafino, and a second round pick with Gabe Vincent for Tyus Jones as a backup option. That is something, you know, certain players are viewed as first round picks that were recently drafted in the first. Now, there are the idea that Jones and Brogdon, who were traded in, you know, in the offseason while Brown was dealt to the Pacers from the Raptors, Brown can only be traded by himself. So I have alluded to the earlier in this video that Brown and Schroeder could be packaged, but from my understanding is that would have to be two separate trades for that to happen. And that might make it, you know, tough cookies. So with the Wizards over here being a team looking for picks, they're going to take the team that gives them the best value. I personally think Tyus Jones, you're looking at LA. I, maybe, I just can't see maybe the Knicks get desperate. I I struggle to, to see. I mean, maybe it would be wild to see if the, the Wizards would engage in bringing DeJounte Murray to have him on the roster so they can trade him. Because we've seen this before. Teams take a, a star player for no... I mean, it would be dumb. But they would keep him and then trade him in the offseason. I mean, they would piss off a lot of teams. But I do believe that Bruce Brown is more than likely... You're hearing Denver. We're hearing LA. We're hearing New York. I think New York and LA make the most sense. Malcolm Brogdon. You know, Miami was a great fit. That's gone. And... The Clippers would be a great fit. I don't think they, they have the assets to get that deal done. I do think Tyus Jones, again, and Malcolm Brogdon are both consolidation prizes for the Lakers if they miss out on Shanti Murray. Bruce, I think the real situation, they would love to turn Ty, Tyus Jones, I mean, not Tyus Jones, Rui, D'Angelo Russell and Gabe Vincent into Bruce Brown and DeJounte Murray. That's what the Lakers want to do. I think the Knicks want Bruce Brown makes sense for them. I think Malcolm Brogdon, a team like Minnesota, would value Malcolm Brogdon being Mike Conley's backup. I, I think a team like Houston, either Tyus Jones or Malcolm Brogdon could be valued. Same thing with the Pelicans. Now it's just finding the matching salary to do those deals. That's where it gets a bit more difficult than you normally would think. A little quick update right here on Kyle Lowry. Kyle Lowry, the man, the myth, the legend himself, is a man that you could expect to be on the move. Yes, obviously we're hearing certain teams would be willing to trade for him, but Kyle Lowry, if he were to be bought out kyle lowry is a guy that do not be surprised if he ends up on the philadelphia 76ers so specifically what we're hearing kyle lowry is a guy who this season got traded for a first, with a first round pick for terry rozier kyle lowry this year is having the worst like numbers number like career lows basically but efficiency wise he has been good because he's taking a limited volley playing 28 minutes a night eight and a half points 42.6 percent from the field 38 and a half percent from three on like two or three attempts a game he mainly only takes three pointers grabs three and a half rebounds four assists a game is 1.1 steals a night and what are you getting with kyle lowry at this point if you were a team like the philadelphia 76ers you're getting still a super confident floor general who can come off the bench and he has a, a tendency to making winning plays. He's shown that he can be a solid outside shooter. He doesn't really get to the basket or at, like he used to, but you know he's still a guy who can run an offense, set up easy looks for his teammates. He's a great leader. He's gonna you know use his body to to stop the, the opponents defensively and make their lives difficult. He's gonna draw charges. As a result, that's gonna cause him to have a bunch of injuries. And his conditioning has only been an issue. But, you know, as it's not as bad in Miami, but like now he's in Charlotte and he won't be having people chewing his ass to stay in shape. So now Jake Fisher of Yahoo Sports is saying that Kyle Lowry is not expected to join the Charlotte Hornets before the trade deadline. The Hornets are interested in trading Lowry before the deadline, but his market is completely limited because everybody is like, yeah, just buy him out. We're not fucking trading shit. Now, Lowry is probably going to be bought out and the Philadelphia 76ers are believed to be a real possibility. Lowry is a native of Philadelphia and the Sixers were one of the few contending teams below the first luxury tax apron and which makes them eligible to sign a player on a contract above $12.4 million that gets bought out. 
which is a new rule in the collective bargaining agreement that was passed this past year. So it's definitely going to be interesting to see if they are acquiring him. A lineup of Tyrese Maxey, Kyle Lowry, Pat Bev would be just dirty. Now, will it give them success? We don't know. But if it brings them joy, I think that's the most important thing. So I feel like... Mm, it's it does make you think on how that's gonna look but i mean he championship player won a championship so we know the phoenix suns love tj mcconnell i love tj mcconnell i'm a big tj mcconnell fan and tj mcconnell's a guy who's you know the, uh, the injury bug has not done him favors but this year tj mcconnell has played 37 games 17 minutes a night which is the lowest since his first season with the pacers he's averaging eight points a night 53.2 percent from the field don't look at that three point percentage because he doesn't take any he takes like one every few games dishing out five and a half assists grabbing three rebounds and a steal a night what are you getting with tj mcconnell if you were to trade for him the pittsburgh native you're not going to be able to get him because the pacer says he's unavailable the selfless pass first mentality point guard who can either speed it up or slow down the game is somebody that they want to keep here they'll do anything to benefit the team and he's a positive attitude in the locker room we've heard all season that the utah jazz and phoenix suns have been linked to mcconnell but they're telling teams, the Indiana Pacers, that they don't want to trade this man. TJ McConnell is not available. So McConnell is under contract through 2024 in the 25 season behind Tyrese Matt Halburn and Andrew Nemhart on the depth chart for the point guard position. Like I said, he's only averaging 17 minutes a night, eight points, you know, which is up to par with what he has scored in the past. Now, if the Pacers were to make another move, which we've heard that they're rumored, with Buddy Heald and Obi Toppin, on the trade block i do think it's a bit interesting seeing a guy like buddy healed if you package buddy healed in my opinion 19.2 so we'll round up 19.3 oh we top in together that is about i believe 26.1 million dollars so you throw in tj mcconnell's money which is you know 8.7 which is 34 million dollars who could you go out and get for 34 million dollars that could help you win i mean it's not like it's oh the like a bunch of options there isn't okay there really isn't unless they were like trying to go out and get themselves a guy along the lines like gordon hayward if they were like not confident that they could get gordon hayward maybe they package those three dudes i don't think so same thing with chris paul I don't think that's something that way they would do, nor would they trade for DeMar DeRozan, but that is a way that they could package a, you know, put a TJ McConnell in a package for a guy making north of $28 million. The Phoenix Suns are looking for ways to improve the roster. Yes, we're hearing that the Phoenix Suns have an interest in PJ Tucker and Bismack Biombo. Bismack Biombo is a guy that was on the roster for the Memphis Grizzlies this year. And there he's a guy that a lot of people thought he was going to stick around for the entirety of the year. And he's a guy that, look, Bismack Biombo is someone that I think is great. And he's had a great season so far. And he played, he got cut by the the Grizzlies when Jaw came out, which is kind of funny now that Jaw's out for season, so like it wasn't worth it. But Go Phoenix is saying a source says PJ Tucker would be interested in joining Phoenix as a buyout as he makes less than $12 million. So he would be able to go to that team as he's under the threshold that Phoenix can sign for buyout players as a team in the second tax apron, like the Suns can only sign players on the buyout market as long as their previous contract was $12.4 million or less prior to being bought out, AKA less than the non-tax player mid-level annual exception. Given that Phoenix current need is some rebounding and some three-point shooting, PJ Tucker and his long-standing friendship with Devin Booker is a perfect fit. Now it's impossible to know if he would choose that team if the Clippers are gonna trade him because the Clippers could just say, fuck you dude, just sit on the roster, we want you. Eventually someone's gonna get a hurt and you're gonna have to play. Or some team could be like, here's a couple second round picks or even a first round pick and pry them off and he never hits the market. Now, I think a consolidation plan for that is a guy like Bismack Biombo, man, who can come in and give you, you know, great rebounds, solid rim protection and put anything back within five feet of the basket in less than 20 minutes a night. That's something that a lot of teams like the Phoenix Suns would definitely enjoy having on their roster. Now, it's all a matter of how it all plays out. Is Bismack Biombo going to go there? Because he might as well go to Miami because he knows he probably could be utilized just as well. So we'll see what happens. I think he's a guy he's definitely biding his time and waiting to see how the market plays out let me hear your thoughts down below on bismack biombo phoenix suns feel confident that they could land 
Miles Bridges. Yes, we've heard that Miles Bridges is someone that the Suns are coveting, which is definitely interesting. I don't think they have the picks. Basically, Naz Little with either Chensi Metu, Bo Bull, or Yuta Wananabe is enough for them to get Miles Bridges. Miles Bridges personally probably does not want to be traded because he loses his bird rights if he gets traded. And he probably, even though he does not plan on staying with Charlotte, and he is saying that he wants to stay in Charlotte, he probably believes this. I play off the season with Charlotte this offseason. I get signed and traded to a team being signed to my bird rights. He can be signed to a bird right contract and then traded to a team that is interested in him and i personally think that is what he's going to do because he will make more money signing a contract via his bird rights and then being traded immediately then being traded right now going on a championship run and getting money later because he wouldn't be signed to a non-bird rights contract but the Suns do believe that they're confident that they could get the deal done if they do trade for him it is already known that it would be a half season rental that he would not stay and the team would go out and get him this is coming from go phoenix and jake fisher i definitely think it's not worth it but this is something that we have heard and we discussed in a previous video so i want to hear your guys thoughts if you're a Suns fan would you do it i just don't think they have any picks to do it i don't know how they get the deal it's a nice thought but again money monetarily and draft asset wise i don't see that deal feasibly being able to get done because of the the difficulty that it would take phoenix to get the assets needed for the the deal to go through that charlotte would want and i i don't know that's my i, I think that the whole problem with that deal so let me hear your thoughts down below on that one guys hope you guys did enjoy andre drummond is drawing several teams into trade interest for him which is definitely interesting because i think a lot of us would say like oh andre drummond not like the most desirable player to go after but yeah he's somebody that we're hearing could be available for trade for the right price and when i look at this i'm like okay like i'm not really wild by it but casey johnson of nbc sports said that monte morris and mike muscala on expiring deals would allow the bulls to shop andre drummond and that's somebody that people are interested in drummond's averaging 7.7 .7 points eight and a half rebounds one and a half steals for the bulls and only did i say the bulls yeah, Bulls. Why does that sound wrong? Bulls. Bulls. In 15.9 minutes a night. Now, what we're hearing, though, is, look, Drummond, when he's out there, he's a guy, he's going to give you a bunch of offensive rebounds. And Andre Drummond, as a start of the season, has had 25, 16 rebounds, a 25 rebound game, 16 rebound game, 23 rebound game, 17 rebounds, 16 rebounds game, the most rebounds per game in a season by a starter in over 40 years. And Drummond is... A guy that mm, I think the perfect team. You guys, your guy, you guy might have laughed at this, but it's it's the Denver Nuggets. If I'm the Denver Nuggets, I look at Zeke Nanji and I say, I love you. I love you, Zeke, but goodbye. Because you might not remember, Andre Drummond is one of the better dribble handoff passers in the league. I, you might think I'm kidding. Go back to the second to last season with the pistons i think it was four and a half assists a game almost five assists a game from andre Dr I, I, I gotta fact check this We're fact checking this because drummond it, it was absurd and this was a season that he was oh yeah three my apology in 2017 to 18 he was putting out three assists a game he did it again in 2019 to 20. so three assists i, I got a little bit of uh, ostentatious right there but Still, for someone like Andre Drummond, where a lot of people say, you know, narrow-minded, tunnel vision, etc., he has shown, especially in a Stan Van Gundy offense, that he could go out and pass and run stuff out the elbow, which I do want to give him credit. A team like the Denver Nuggets would freaking love Trump to come off the bench for Nikolai Jokic. Oh, I get a little hard thinking about it. Malcolm Brogdon and Robert Williams are drawing interest from a team by the name of the Houston Rockets. How, how many people are surprised by that rumor? Now, we're hearing specifically from Jake Fisher of Yahoo Sports that in addition to the Knicks and Lakers, league personnel believes Malcolm Brogdon is drawing legitimate interest from the Houston Rockets, which has plenty of former Boston staffers overlapped with Brogdon's tenure in Boston 
on the staff now that joined this past offseason. Head coach Emma Udoka's Rockets are also one of the teams that is considered moving for injured Portland big man, Mr. Robert Williams. Now you're thinking, Sarah, how would they get this deal done? Because the amount of salary they need to trade for one of these players would be a lot more than you they have on the roster well this is a team that also didn't spend all the money that they had available for them so when you look at a potential deal to bring these players in and if you're like why would you trade for robert williams well long term the turnaround that they could benefit from having a guy like him on the roster is great so right now robert williams makes 11.5 million dollars under contract for two more years you hope he'd be back for the first game of the season next year so you would have to be able to trade 34 million dollars in theory for matching salaries but the thing is is the houston rockets are a team that doesn't necessarily have to trade matching salary to get this deal done so if you look at the current structure of the team they have a man by the name of jock landell making eight million dollars they have 6.5 from jay sean tate and victor oladipo making 9.4 jeff green making 9.6 right there you have yourself 10 million dollars between green and victor oladipo you have 28 from if you throw in jock landell and now you're at almost 35 million dollars when you throw jay sean tate in that deal is that going to be a deal to sweeten the pot enough for the portland trailer trailblazers the bite or in, or are you giving up too much money i mean i think you might be giving up too much in jalen green i mean jeff green in that deal but i think a deal of victor oladipo with jock landell and J just sean tate would be something that could convince the 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 rockets i mean the the blazers to do business with the rockets and the whole thing is is if you were to do that deal of victor oladipo jock landell and jay sean tate you only need to cut 2.6 million dollars in salary and the whole thought process right there would be if you trade maybe a guy like uh, a reggie bullock i think that would i think you you're still only 600k so reggie bullock might not be the guy that you could do in that deal but you still could get through this deal i mean mm, you could package aaron holiday and you know bullock and then the deal gets through which honestly is probably the easiest thing for them to do as they're on like super cheap deals and i i doubt i would doubt that they could convince him to do this because he's been playing so many minutes for them but i mean if you first off the deal of aaron holiday reggie bullock jay shante jock landell and victor oladipo for robert williams and and malcolm brogdon does work and technically it makes the blazers better and that's why i wonder like could you throw on tamani kamara in this deal and does the deal still work and now would the blazers be willing to trade tamani kamara i don't think so but they could trade tamani kamara if you do a deal with malcolm brogdon robert williams tamani kamara for victor oladipo jock landell jay sean tate reggie bullock aaron holiday it it completely works and the rockets now walk away with 7.2 million dollars extra in salary while the blazers save 11.2 i mean it's up to you if you think that's worth it we are hearing that jordan clarkson and mr colin sexton are on the trade block which is definitely interesting coming from jake fisher of yahoo sports the utah jazz are being considered both a buyer and a seller at this juncture with ball handlers jordan clarkson and colin sexton and Taylor horn tucker considered available for trade sources said while the jazz are confident in rookie keontae george's fitness as their point guard of the future the jazz have registered interest in several veterans including murray dejounte murray and said to possibly hold the position in the interim now the whole thing is that colin sexton has drawn interest from the lakers jordan clarkson has drawn interest to a bunch of teams that want three-point shooting so for me i think when you look at this situation as a whole or holistically i think the biggest thing is is that colin sexton is a scoring punch and they've been really liking him but i think when jordan clarkson a guy that's been drawing interest from the knicks if you look at that guy, team the knicks are probably saying give us jordan clarkson and we have a package of Evan Fournier and Quinn Grimes that could interest you. And if I'm Utah, I'm sitting there. I'm like, Quinn Grimes is kind of nice. Jordan Clarkson making $23.4 million. You get the deal done that way. Maybe also another guy, Colin Sexton, could be the guy that maybe a team like the Celtics are more interested in. With Sexton, you're getting a microwave who can facilitate. He's a guy who's averaged 20 points a game. He can average close to 10 assists a night, but he's not. He's going to give you porous defense. Same thing with Jordan Clarkson, but he's not going to have much of the passing chops, but he's going to have a bit more scoring ability, especially off the bench. 
but he is under contract for two more seasons. So is Colin Sexton. Colin Sexton's contract increases up to almost $19 million, while after the season, Jordan Clarkson's contract drops from $23.4 million, which is basically just under three twenty, under three twenty. 23.5 he drops to 14 million dollars which is a lot more manageable if you have the money to do this deal right now which again i think out of the two players i personally if i'm a younger team trying to make that jump i'm going for colin sexton but if i'm a contending team and i really need help off the bench we've seen many teams like a milwaukee bucks which i don't think the milwaukee bucks have the money to do this deal because it would require them trading bobby portis pat connington and marjan bochamp in a three player deal just to get the salaries there i think they'd give up too much to do this deal but i do believe that contending teams like that would have interest in a jordan clarkson deal if they have the salary to to move for him so the golden state warriors are still reluctant to trade mr jonathan kaminga yes jonathan kaminga fights another day and it's definitely interesting to see how this is all playing out because look jonathan kaminga is a great player he's got a great head on his shoulders but we're all gonna not like sit here in an agreement and act like a team that i think needs to be chasing that championship needs to be trying to to, to get to that level to not waste their their steph curry's end of his career i think they need to trade him he's one of the best trade chips but let me tell you what we're hearing and i want to hear you guys agree. maybe i'm wrong i'm not a warriors fan but looking at the situation he's a guy that could get you a good player and i i think you need to keep this window open now my co-worker mike scotto says the warriors are pleased with the growth of johnny kaminga this season and are reluctant to trade him from what he's told theoretically it would take a package involving an all-star player or better or even an overpay of draft picks for the golden state warriors to consider trading him some wonder if kaminga would have been a trade candidate for pascal siakam as the raptors and warriors did have talks but nothing got close toronto wasn't even that high on kaminga as some had assumed and Eric Slater says that he's massively improved. He's had the best stretch down his career. And I agree, he's committed more to driving to the rim, the rim and he's got a lot more steam going downhill. And he doesn't rely on that jumper as much. And he's taking more threes to the, than the mid-range. And Steve Kerr's been saying he reminds him of Sean Marion. I think that's a great way with his slashing ability. And it, the way he's playing is that it does put a guy like Andrew Wiggins' future up into, you know, the air and Jonathan Kaminga playing 25 to 30 minutes a night is it's been good I mean obviously the combinations of where Kaminga and Wiggins are together it doesn't work the numbers are really bad we know that and I think the bigger question is what is you know Andrew Wiggins future in the next few weeks is what Kaminga is I think the bigger it's gonna affect Kaminga bigger than what's gonna happen with Kaminga because I think Kaminga is a guy who's in the in the present and I, I do I do understand I do believe that there was a tradable player that they should trade for him, but I don't think DeJounte Murray was going to be the game changer. I did think Pascal Siakam could have helped them, but I think it's better if they wait for the deadline and trade him. I'm not the deadline, the, the offseason and trade him for a star if they if one becomes available, then being desperate and maybe going all in on a lost season. Now, I I think when you have a guy like Jonathan Kaminga, there is ups and downs with him he is going to be a guy that you know consistency the you know a bit volatile at times so learning how to harness him is going to always be a big question but if you can do it and do it right you have a guy who's going to give you a lot for a long time so for me that is something that could keep you interested in him for you know for forever if it pans out because he is a guy who looks like could become a 20 25 point per game score which is hard to find in the league that can play adequate defense with it. All right, and the final thing that I want to talk about today is we talked about earlier that the the the, the Wizards have a mandate to trade for a first round pick, but we're hearing that Tyus Jones is drawing trade interest, and we've talked about this before. That I do believe that Tyus Jones is a guy that is looking at a consolidation prize if teams can't get Malcolm Brogdon or you know Dejounte Murray like the Lakers they might just trade a Vincent with Jalen Huchifino in a second round pick or like Max Christie or something like that for Tyus Jones which uh, you know that's not a bad deal I could see a team like Brooklyn Nets the Brooklyn Nets go out and get him maybe a team like the the Hornets trade us a pick and we trade them like Tyus Jones and for the pick and Kyle Lowry for Tyus Jones and somebody else i think that could realistically be a deal we could convince some teams 
to to give us guys like joe harris on the the piston for a draft pick compensation i think there are multiple avenues for tyus jones to happen but the bigger thing is that denny avia trade could happen and i think there's a lot of teams like the miami heat like the 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 dallas mavericks that are looking at denny avdia a guy who's playing 28 minutes a night scoring 12 and a half points which is a career high shooting a career high 50 percent from the field shooting a career high 37 percent from three on like four or five attempts a game grabbing a career high six and a half boards dishing out a career high four assists a night and having a steal a game i mean yeah steal a game and providing sound defense he's 23 years old and the thing is is the six foot nine what 220 pound combo forward at this point is like developed into a massive point forward who's six foot nine 215 220 pounds he's like incredibly good at secondary playmaking and creating for others he's a solid ball handler who never gets ripped never turns the ball over dude he can run the pick and roll or be like the roller in the pick and roll sometimes or the popper i wouldn't tell him the roll of the basket but a pick and pop situation shown that he's been incredibly coachable like he was not a good defensive player but because he's so coachable he's become a good defensive player and his jumper has become legit the, the upside's amazing and yeah he's an average athlete who ha who lacks that high-end quickness but he's shown that it doesn't hurt him defensively because of how hard he tries. Making this season $6.2 million. He signed an extension this offseason of, I believe, the contract specifically that he signed is, I want to say, I don't know why the, the contract is not popping up. But his contract that he signed was a, a four-year $55 million deal. And it's going to be paying him basically starting next year next year he'll be making i want to confirm this 15.6 million dollars so the trade kicker you have to assume is a hundred percent so if you're trading for him he makes 6.2 this year so you'd have to trade 12 and a half million dollars to get him and i think a team like the the heat are somebody to keep an eye out i think the bigger threat is the is the mavericks the mavericks would love denny Avdia, but the heat if they were willing to package like nikola jovic with Thomas Bryant and Caleb Martin, I think you could convince the the Wizards to move on from him. I don't think he's the best fit right there. I think, but he's a guy. I think the better fit is Dallas. The more I think of it, Dallas would love him, and they could they might move on from Grant Williams to do that deal, or maybe they look at you know Rashawn Holmes, a pick, and Jaden Hardy as a way to get that deal done. And I, I really like the idea of Kyrie, Luca. Grant Williams, Derek Lively, Josh Green, Denny Abdi all being, you know, in a rotation with each other. It's fucking fantastic.